morning, everybody. I'm really happy to be here and share my experiences of 15 years of design practice and 39 years of breathing life. One thing which I have uh, realized of late is very interesting, that I see things that don't exist but can. And when I say this, what I mean to say is that we always have to see things which we want to achieve, even though they don't exist in the physical reality. And what are the tips and tricks to actually do it? And I believe each one of us here have the ability to see things that don't exist yet, but can. The first thing is what we need is empathy. Because empathy is something which teaches us to see things from another's point of view. I'll share a small story with you that will elaborate the fact which we need to imbibe within us. When I was in my final year of engineering, okay, to give you a little bit of my background, I always wanted to be a cartoonist. And I did pursue cartooning as a professional in an uh, English news daily called the Lokmat Times. I had my own pocket column called the Not As You See. And I was doing this as a night job. So in the morning, I would go to college. And in the evening, my night shift, I would work as a sub-editor and a cartoonist. So the job profile started from 8 in the evening and would go up to 3.30 a.m. in the morning. So during one of, uh, and, and every day, like, I would do this. And while coming back from work, I observed something very, very interesting. These newspaper boys would roll up the newspapers, carry it along with them, and throw it up to various heights to reach different levels of the apartments. And I felt that was a humongous task being done on a daily basis. So what I realized was that as a cartoonist, all these years what I was doing was I was making fun of things, commenting on things which are happening around me. But when I had this feeling of empathy, when I saw these guys struggling with this thing on a daily basis, I felt, can I do something about it? And with whatever means I had with me, I designed my first product idea, which was the newspaper dispenser. A funny idea, but then it won me my first product design award. And that was a huge impetus for me to consider product design as a uh, career ahead. So I decided to apply for NID, National Institute of Design, for my post-graduation in product design. One of the most important things that I learned here was about habituation. It actually stops us from bringing change in our life and also in things around us. We are so much so habituated with things around us, we feel that it's OK to be like that. For example, we all have seen these. It was a regular sight for me when I used to travel back home from Ahmedabad to Calcutta. I used to travel mostly with unreserved tickets, so most of my time would be spent traveling alongside the toilet, sometimes hiding inside the toilet. And I would find these kind of, and this is a very good image, huh? this is not that dirty. <laughs> so what do you see here? What do you see here? You, you See, as Indians, we need water to wash after defecation, right? So we have water in ample, but how do we hold it? We don't have a mug here. And even though if there was a mug, it used to be chained, and it wouldn't reach the desired destination, <laughs> right? So I thought, and, and what exactly we used to do? I clearly remember we used to cup, you know, uh, cut plastic bottles or use paper cups and to use to hold the water. And what happened was that we used to litter the space in and around us. And that was really something which I wanted to change about a status quo, which was already there. So I had an idea. If I have a folding disposable toilet mug, which I can carry with myself to the toilet and use it, and I can throw it off, and it decomposes after some time, because it's made of paper, and there's no synthetic glue in it. And it was built with a square piece of paper, and the technique was simple as origami. I also planned that, okay, I would sell them in a pack of three, 
maybe around five rupees, and it was easily fit in your pocket, and you can take it to your toilet. Neither did I stop here. I thought, and all this was happening while I was a student. I thought, okay, now, how do we actually get these mugs out in the train or in the platform areas? So an idea struck me that since this product was so simple to create, what if I train the rag pickers? That would probably give them some kind of livelihood. If we could supply the papers to the different stations, these guys would actually fold it up and create the mugs and maybe earn a bit out of it. So this won uh, uh, me the Design Planner Award by the then Chief Minister Sri Narendra Modi. And this product is in the permanent collection of the uh, Design Museum in Copenhagen as we speak. So I always believe you see things that you look for. Let's look at, take a look at the image. At first glance, what do we see? Okay, he's a chef, he's cooking something in the kitchen. But as a designer, I always look for problems and if I could add some value to improve every, everyday life experiences. So what I noticed is that if you look at the switch plates, if you look very clearly, the switch plates are not placed in a horizontal fashion. They're not the way they're supposed to be. They're all placed vertically. So what can you imagine in this situation where he's kind of focusing on what he's going to, going to cook and he has to switch on and off, I think it is really difficult to actually orient your mind that which way is on and which way is off. To, to elaborate, I'll show you this image. This is a regular switch plate. Now if I place it this way, now really can you understand when you're in a frenzied mind, which way is on and which way is off? It's really difficult. It's a cognitive load on you. So I thought, can I do something about it? Of course. So I studied deeper and what I realized was that why the switches were placed horizontal and the plate was vertical because the socket size was not a square, it was a rectangle, 42 by 45 mm. So what I did, I changed the socket size to 45 by 45 square. So you could rotate the square in any direction and still be the same. So now you can place the switch plates in any direction and still have the switches in the right direction so that you have, don't have that cognitive load. This was launched by a company called GM and still one of the best sellers for them. Another interesting thing as I explore how to see things which don't exist is that I try to see the invisible. It's really easy to find a solution for a problem which you can actually see. But how do you find solutions when no one actually sees the problem? You have to look deeper. For example, in this. A very mundane, a regular multi-plug and a two-pin plug. We all use them on a daily basis. What is the problem that I really observed here? Was that the two-pin holes on the socket bottom side was not visible. Second, the two-pin plug would get loose after a time and would tend to fall off due to gravity. And third, of course, the product looked boring and ugly. Can I do something about it? What I did was that I added an angle of 40 degree to the regular multi-plug and I created a new category of a product which is called the angular multi-plug. Now gravity which was uh, actually getting the plug to fall off is now actually helping it to stop there because of the angle. A very simple idea but now this again is, being re is doing really well in the market for the past 15 years now, the same brand. So this is how you see things which don't exist. And the power of curiosity, which always you know, helps us to see beyond the obvious. It was a very interesting brief to work on. Uh, actually, this project was done in Pune, in Najangao. Um, and the marketing brief was that, can you design a refrigerator for us that looks taller than the competition? Now, that was quite an quite a intriguing uh, brief to work on. That how do you actually increase the height of a refrigerator to make it just look taller than the competition. So the first ideas would come, okay, can I increase the uh, leg size, which is adjustable, can I make it more taller or something like that. 
So instead of that, you know, I was very curious to understand how exactly people are using the product at home. So I started doing home visits. Very interesting observation here, if you see, people are actually making those plastic uh, uh, wooden frame stands to mount their refrigerator. We, I went on to see more uh, such homes and what I saw was very interesting. That there was a plastic stand available in the market which people were actually buying to make their products taller. Well, I didn't stop here because I didn't feel that this was a solution which it was already there. There was nothing I could add value to this only if I style the product and make it a good looking product. So what I did, I went into the kitchen space also. And what I observed here was very, very interesting was that people use these kind of baskets to actually store onions and potatoes. And they are also buying those plastic stands. So they're spending 700 odd rupees in the stand and also three to 400 rupees in buying these baskets. And when you have these baskets, this is also consuming a considerable amount of space in your kitchen. So I had a funny idea, can I, can I combine both the, both the utilities together? Can I combine both the utilities together? And then I was discussing the same idea with the structural engineers and I built my first prototype, which was called the utility drawer. So now this drawer would go beneath the refrigerator to store your onions and potatoes. We did a quick research with housewives to find if they were comfortable using it. And this was launched by Whirlpool called the utility drawer beneath the refrigerators. So now what we have, we have a well integrated look for the product. We've also increased the height of the product. And now it has become a standard in the trade. Now everyone has it and wants one. Solutions are mostly closer than you think and sometimes hidden in absolute plain sight. I'll share an example. Uh, again, a design brief from LG Electronics was that, uh, can we design a LCD, uh, an India-specific LCD television? Now, a television is a universal product, it's a global product. How do you make a product Indian? Maybe I can add some paisley patterns to it. <laughs> Maybe I can add some uh, maroon color strips. <laughs> I don't know because you know, uh, can I make some uh, uh, craft element to it to make it look Indian? But no, that's not how I uh, approach projects. And I completely believe that, that what makes us Indian is the way we use products, and it differentiates us from pe how people use products in different contexts. So again, my favorite task: I visit homes. Okay, before that, what I observed was that when you have an LCD television, no one is interested in having the LCD television on the tabletop anymore. Why do you want a television, an LCD? Because it can go up on the wall. Divar pe jane wala TV chahiye. So when you have the television on the wall, what happens to the stand? The company has invested in the stand of the television and I'm sure half of you would not know where the stand is at home if your television is on the wall, right? So that element of product is completely gone for a toss. It's a waste. So this is how people are placing the televisions. So they're placing it, the DTH box on the uh, top of the television or you know, having those glass shelves. So as I said, the solutions are lying in plain sight. So here was actually the solution I was looking for. And what I did next was that I simply converted the stand into a shelf. It took six months to engineer the detail of the uh, components because we didn't want to increase the cost of the product at any point in time. This is me doing the mock-up final round in Korea. And this was launched by LG called the transformed LED TV where you could actually transform the stand into a tray and the product which was lost in isolation now had a new utility and a life to it. <laughs> Last but not the least, voluntary simplicity. There are many ways to complicate things, but there's always a way 
to simplify things. This project was done alongside with my wife Suhasini, who is also a designer and she works along with me in this project. So what do you observe in this photograph? We all struggle to take out the eyes of the eye strays, right? And there, have been, and there have been many complications done to reduce, to make the effort easier. You have those turning knobs and all of that. So there have been efforts to complicate it, but I, I seldom see any effort to actually reduce and uncomplicate it. So what is the problem here? That when ice, when water freezes, it expands and it gets stuck to all the sides. And that's why it doesn't come out easily and you have to twist and turn. A very simple idea. We realize that water in its natural form, we understand it as a drop. So if we freeze a drop, it will become a frozen drop. And the surface, it's simple physics, it's hemispherical. So when actually this ice freezes, it actually pops up. It doesn't get stuck anymore. When it freezes, it expands and it pops up. And you can easily scoop up the ice into your drink. I think here I'll leave you with, with a thought that you need to look and not just see at things. You have to really look closer because that's the way I feel that observation is the key to real innovation. Thank you.